Let's see how limits can help us solve the area problem, that is to find the area under the graph of a function over an interval. Here you can see the graph of a function f in red, plotted over an interval a, b along the x-axis. And our aim is to find the area of this region that is enclosed between the graph of the function and the interval a, b. We find this area by taking the interval a, b and subdividing it, partitioning it into smaller subintervals of equal width, more and more of them, and then raising rectangles above each subinterval up to certain heights given by points on the graph of the function for each subinterval. Now you may notice that in this figure what we did is we have taken these subintervals, looked at their midpoints, evaluated the function at the midpoint, and that value that we got gave us the height of each rectangle. Now the total area of these rectangles approximates the area under the graph of the function, and we would expect that as the number of subintervals and the number of rectangles, therefore little n, goes to infinity, in the limit we would solve the area problem and obtain the area under the graph of the function. Here you can see the uh, total area of those rectangles uh, up to some decimal places, and you see that number getting closer and closer to the uh, answer to the area problem. Now I mentioned that these sample points that we choose um, were the midpoints of each subinterval in this figure, but that need not be the case. Regardless of the choice of sample points, we should always get the same area under the graph of the function in the limit as n goes to infinity. Now, um, which number seems to be around that number there up to those decimal places. So uh, you see how the number barely changes anymore. As, an, as we let n go to infinity, in the limit we get the area under the graph of the function to be that number for this function over that interval. Now let's see how we can formalize this whole idea and procedure um, using a precise definition. We say that the integral of a function f from a point a to a point b is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum indexed by i that goes from 1 to n, the sum of these products f of x i star times delta x. Delta x represents here the width of the uh, rectangles when we have n of them, and f of x i star represents the height of the ith rectangle. Provided that this limit exists and is the same for all possible choices of sample points x i star, x i star is taken from the ith subinterval that is the closed interval between xi minus 1 and xi. So provided that this happens, we say that the function is integrable over the interval a, b, and we denote this limit uh, by, by these symbols. We call this the definite integral of f from a to b. So we read it as the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Now, as I mentioned, the uh, subintervals have these endpoints xi with x0 being a and xn being b for all n. xi in general can be expressed as I a plus i times delta x, where i changes from 0 to n. Delta x is the width of um, each subinterval when we have, have n of them. That means that we take the, the total length of the interval a, b, so that's b minus a, divide it into n equal parts. That's why delta x is b minus a over n. Now, a word of warning. Because in this sum that we call the Riemann sum, we have the values of the function f of x i star, and those values need not be positive, it, they could be zero or negative, it is entirely possible that the definite integral that we get in the end is not a positive number, but can be also zero or negative. So when we say that it is a solution to the area problem, what we really mean, it's the solution to a signed area problem, meaning that uh, regions that are below the x-axis contribute with their areas with a negative sign, whereas regions above the x-axis contribute to the total area with a positive sign. Now, let's, concrete, let, let's see a concrete example. Uh, let's consider the function f of x equals x over the interval between 0 and 1. So that means we are looking for the value of the definite integral from 0 to 1 of x dx. In terms of areas, that means that we are looking for the area under the graph of this function f of x equals x over the interval between 0 and 1. Well, the graph of that function is just a straight line with slope 1 that connects the origin to the point with coordinates 1, 1. Therefore, the area, the region that is between the graph of the function and the x-axis is just this triangle 
this right triangle that has a base and a height of unit length therefore the area is base times height over 2 uh, so that number should be a half this is what we expect this definite integral to be now let's check it using the definition the limit of the Riemann sums so for this interval between 0 and 1 when we divide it into n equal parts and equal subintervals each subinterval will have a length of 1 over n that's why delta x is 1 over n and the um, uh, subdivision points xi are i over n as i goes from 0 to n the ith sample point xi star therefore which can stay come from this closed interval between xi minus 1 and xi is therefore in this case is between i minus 1 over n and i over n Let's consider the nth Riemann sum, that is this sum of f of x i star times delta x. And notice that f of x is equal to x, therefore f of x i star is simply x i star. Delta x we already established is just 1 over n. And therefore, this is our Riemann, nth Riemann sum that we need to take the limit uh, of as n goes to infinity. Now x i star, as we notice, uh, can vary between these values therefore replacing x i star by the lower bound i minus 1 over n in each term we obtain the lower bound for the entire Riemann sum that is the sum of i minus 1 over n times 1 over n that's why we get i minus 1 over n squared in each term as n go i goes from 1 to n similarly for the upper bound x i star replaced by i over n we obtain in each term i over n times 1 over n that's i over n squared and these are added up as i goes from 1 to n now this lo these lower and upper bounds are valid for any n and regardless of the choice of the sample points now uh, here in the lower bound you may notice that what we are doing is we are adding the integers from 0 to n minus 1 and divide all of them by n square and in the upper bound, similarly, we are adding the integers from 1 to n and divide all, on, all of them by n squared. Therefore, we can use the formula that tells us that the sum of integers from 1 to k is k times k plus 1 over 2 and substitute k equals n minus 1 for the lower bound and k equals n for the upper bound to get nice closed formulas for these upper and lower bounds. For the lower bound, we obtain n minus 1 times n over 2 n squared. And for the upper bound, we get n times n plus 1 over 2 n squared. This is again valid for all n and regardless of the choice of sample points. Now we let little n go to infinity. And you may notice how both the lower and upper bound has the same limit, that is 1 over 2, a half. Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, the Riemann sum, the nth Riemann sum that is in the middle, as n goes to infinity, has also the same limit, a half. Thus, we can conclude that the definite integral from 0 to 1 of x dx is a half, and this is matching our expectation based on areas. Now, let's solve another problem. Use the definition of integral to calculate the definite integral from 0 to 1 of 3x squared dx. So, pause the video and use the definition that you just saw along with this formula to obtain the value for the definite integral. Okay, I hope you paused the video and inputted one for this definite integral. So uh, in this definite integral, in terms of areas, we are looking for the area of the region that is under the graph of the function f of x equals 3x squared uh, over the interval between 0 and 1. So this region is now uh, much less uh, clear what uh, this area should be because it's the area under a parabolic arc. Um, but nevertheless, we can find this definite integral from 0 to 1 of 3x squared dx by using the definition. So it is, this is the limit as little n goes to infinity of the nth Riemann sum, that is the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of x i star delta x. Now in this problem, we have the interval between 0 and 1. Therefore, when we divide that into n, uh, subintervals of equal length we get delta x to be 1 over n and just like before the ith subinterval um, is i minus 1 over n to i over n therefore the ith sample point can vary between i minus 1 over n and i over n for i going to from 1 to n 
Now, therefore, when we look at the nth uh, Riemann sum, that is the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of x i star, well, this in this problem, f of x is, is uh, 3x squared. Therefore, um, f of x i star is 3 times x i star squared. And delta x we already established is 1 over n. So therefore, we get a lower bound for this nth Riemann sum if we replace x i star by its lower bound i minus 1 over n. So we get this sum as i goes from 1 to n of 3 times i minus 1 over n squared. So that's i minus 1 squared divided by n squared. But then there is this another 1 over n factor. So that's why we have i minus 1 squared over n cubed. Similarly, for the upper bound, we can obtain the sum as i goes from 1 to n of 3 times i squared over n cubed. And that, then we can notice that the common factor in each term is 3 over n cubed. If we factor it out, we obtain the sum of squares from 0 to n minus 1 in the lower bound and the sum of squares from 1 to n in the upper bound. We can use the formula for the sum of and the first uh, k uh, squares uh, and substitute k equals n minus 1 and k equals n respectively for the lower and upper bound to get nice closed formulae. For the lower bound we obtain 3 times n minus 1 times n uh, times 2 n minus 1 because in this uh, formula we have k equals n minus 1 and this is divided by 6 n cubed. Uh, so this is the lower bound for the and three months sum. Let me just rewrite it in the original form. And the upper bound, when k is equal to n in that formula, gives us the closed formula uh, that is 3 times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by uh, 6n cubed. Now, this lower, these lower and upper bounds are valid for any n, and regardless of the choice of the sample points, and their limit as n goes to infinity happens to be the same number that you can check is 1. Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, we obtain the value for the definite integral. That is the limit of the nth Riemann sum. And as n goes to infinity, by the squeeze theorem, this definite integral that we were after, the integral from 0 to 1, of 3x squared dx is equal to that number that is 1. Let's look at the next question. Evaluate the definite integral by interpreting it in terms of signed areas. So pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and have inputted 3 for the value of the definite integral. So what you can do is uh, plot the graph of this function f of x equals x over 2 minus 1 over the interval between 0 and 6. If you do that you get uh, something like this, where you can see that certain parts of the graph are below the x-axis. So those uh, regions will contribute to, with a negative sign with their areas. And indeed, this triangular region, it has um, a base of two units and a height that is one. And therefore, this contributes with one times two over two. So that's one, but with a negative sign. So that's a negative one uh, contribution to uh, the definite integral, whereas this triangular region is above the x-axis. It has a base that is four um, units long and a height that is uh, two units long. So four times two over two gives us four. So that's positive four uh, as a contribution to the definite integral. So that's why we get four minus one equals three for the value of the definite integral. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.